So thank you. Um, so many of you have heard about uh, contact and other flows. So the goal of these mini talks is to give um, some information from the contact side of the story. So uh, during this talk, I will talk about uh, contact geometry and open books. Tomorrow, Pierre will talk about Birkhoff sections and another flows, and hopefully on Thursday, we'll talk about surgery. So let's start with the, the setting in, in this talk. M will always be a three-dimensional smooth manifold shall we suppose oriented and uh, everything will be smooth And for me, smooth is C infinity. So maps, vector fields, manifolds, surfaces, everything is smooth for me. And last thing, I will assume that M does not have boundary. So uh, let's start with uh, basic definitions on uh, contact geometry. So first, a contact form on my three-dimensional uh, manifold M. So is a one form, so a differential form, which I will always denote alpha, such that Alpha, which the alpha, which is a three form, is a volume form. And the geometric object under study in contact geometry, it's not the contact form, it's a kernel, which is called the contact structure. So. so the contact structure on M, it's a plane field, Xi, Such that, so at each point on M, I have a plane in the tangent um, space. So this plane can be deformed as a kernel of a one form. So I have a global description like this always. And I ask that uh, alpha is a contact form. <clears throat> so technically, here I'm asking that the contact form is defined on the whole manifold, so this gives me a co-oriented contact form. There also exists more general contact structure that are defined on M, and we impose this condition only locally, but I will not talk about this one. And so Xi 
is said to be positive if alpha y g alpha, which is a volume form, is a positive, so define the orientation of my manifold, and negative otherwise. So, <clears throat> first a remark, uh, these conditions, so alpha, WHD alpha, volume form, positive or negative, uh, it does not depend on the choice of alpha such that uh, psi is the kernel of alpha. So if I pick another contact form for psi, so if psi is also uh, beta, then beta can be written as f times alpha, where f is a smooth map from m to r, and which is never equal to 0. OK, and so al beta wedge d beta, so it's f alpha wedge, so I differentiate this, df wedge alpha plus f d alpha. So alpha wedge alpha, so it's, this one gives me 0. So I, I get f square uh, alpha wedge d alpha. So the f square is positive. So the fact that it's a volume form here is equivalent to this one being a volume form. And being positive or negative does not depend on the choice of uh, the contact form here. So let's consider some examples. So let's start with a zeroth example, so the, the fundamental one, which is on R3. And with the standard contact form, dz minus y dx. So the standard contact structure is a kernel of this. So let's try to draw it. So this is R3. <clears throat> so alpha, it only depends on y. So if I translate what happened in z or x direction, nothing happened. So I only have to draw what happened on the y axis and then translate everything. So for y equal to 0, this is dz equal 0, so the plane is horizontal. And then, so d over dy is always in the kernel of this. And then another vector is a vector of slope y. So here it's horizontal. And then when you go ahead, it turns. So it starts nearly vertical. At infinity, it's vertical. It turns. It's flat there, and then vertical, and this picture everywhere. So there's a, a theorem, which is called Darbo theorem, which say that this is a local model, so every contact form, every contact structure looks locally like that.
Now that this means that contact structure uh, do not have local invariants like curvature and Riemannian ge geometry or things like that. So another example is an the sphere, the three sphere, which I will see in C2. So if I pick a point P and my sphere, I will define so the contact plane at P to be so the intersection between the tangent space of S3 at P with its image by the multiplication by I. So this is the uh, complex invariant part of the tangent uh, space to the sphere. And this gives me a contact structure. And as it is a mini course, I can give exercises, right? OK. This contact structure has a nice contact form. And just apply the definition. You can check that this is a kernel of xy dy1 minus y1 dx1 plus the same x2 dy2 minus y2. Minus y2 dx2. So this is on S3 with xy1, y1, x2, y2 standard coordinate on uh, R4. So let's complicate a bit the topology and look at T3. So the three torus. With coordinate x, y, z. And so the following is a contact form. So cos n, z, dx plus sine n, z, dy for an integer uh, n. So uh, this is also a contact structure. And you can draw some picture. So this time, it only depends on z. So I will look at what happened along the z-axis. Then for z equals 0, I have dx equals zero, so I obtain a plane uh, like that. Then it will start turning, and then at some point, this one will be one, and this one will be uh, zero, so we have made half turn. And so on. And on, on the vertical line, the contact structure met does n turns before uh, closing up because we are on T3. So these two pictures, they illustrate something very important, which is that contact structures are plane till that rotates. And this can be seen on the definition. So the condition alpha wedge D alpha is a volume form. It's the opposite of the, the, uh, the condition in Frobenius theorem we say that a uh, plane field is a foliation if alpha wedge d alpha is zero. Okay. So uh, contact structure are con uh, plane field as far as, as possible from being foliation. And that's what makes them turn everywhere.
So, let's generalize the previous example and consider SG a Riemannian, so a Riemann surface. Then I can look at its unit tangent bundle. <coughs> And I will first describe the contact structure and then give a contact form. So here is S. I pick a point P and S. So unit tangent bundle is point plus norm one vector tangent to S. So uh, let's consider some uh, unit vector V, and I will draw, uh, so all the unit tangent vector above P, it's a circle, and I will draw it vertically above uh, P here. So here is a fiber of uh, vectors uh, tangent to S at P, and so let's say that PV corresponds to this point, then I have to describe a plane at this point. So what it's going to be? Downstairs, so on S, I consider the orthogonal of V, and my contact plane will be the plane that projects to this orthogonal. So here is my contact plane, and so when P is fixed but V moves, the plane rotates along the fiber, so we still have this rotating uh, picture. So if you want a contact uh, form, so alpha at P and V, so it will eat a tangent vector to the unit uh, tangent uh, bundle, so x. It will be j. So the condition is that when I project, this is orthogonal to d, so the scalar product is 0. So gx gp, sorry. So this is a, this equals to zero is the condition of orthogonality between V and the projection. So here pi is the projection from the unit tangent bundle to S. I use it to project vectors and ask this condition. So maybe Another exercise is to check that if I pick T2 for S and the flat metric for G, this gives me example two. Oh, oh, yes, sorry. Yes. Yes. And uh, one last uh, example, which is more motivating example, that one I will use later, which is that uh, contact structures appears as boundaries of some symplectic manifolds or on hypersurfaces in symplectic manifolds.
So uh, this is an important motivation to study contact structure, even if I won't go into details now. So for instance, um, S3 here is a boundary of B4. So this is an example. And here, the unit tangent boundary is a boundary of the disk tangent bundle, which is also an example of this. Any question so far? So we have seen a lot of examples. I will conclude this section by saying that uh, contact structure always exists on compact oriented manifold. So this is the theorem by Martinet. So there exist contact structures on compact on all compact oriented uh, three manifolds without boundary. So now I will turn to contact and wrap vector fields. So let's start with the definition of the wrap vector field. So I consider a contact structure xi with a preferred contact form alpha on my manifold M. Then the red vector field R alpha. So is a vector field on M so such that the two following conditions are satisfied. The first one is if I plug our alpha into G alpha, I obtain zero. And the second one is that alpha evaluated on your alpha, or alpha is one. So the alpha, so alpha is a contact form. So I have alpha which the alpha, which is always a volume form. So the alpha has a kernel of that, which is one dimensional. And the rough vector field is di directs this kernel. And this is a normalization condition. 
So in particular, the Rebecca field is always transversal to the contact structure. So this is given by the second condition. So one thing that's important is that uh, our alpha, so here there's a small alpha, and it's to remind you that these do depend on alpha and not only on psi. If you change for another contact from beta, uh, the rep vector field can change drastically. So let's go back to my example and see what the rep vector field in this uh, situation. So the first one is up there and so for the standard contact form the rep vector field is a vertical d over dz uh, vector field. So this is not super interesting. Let's look at the second example. So it's S3. So here, with the contact form I have uh, just uh, below, so, so at Z1, Z2 in S3, but I look at S3 into C2, So it's IZ1, IZ2 when I uh, make a sort of ugly identification between uh, C2 and its tangent uh, space. And this gives you that the rep flow is an up flow. Okay, so every orbit is periodic, same period, 48 S3. Check. So example two is a three torus. We have an explicit formula, an explicit uh, rep vector field. Choose this one and which rotates. It's orthogonal to the contact plane and it rotates with it. So the third one, so the remain surface and unique tangent uh, case is, I think, really interesting for you here because the rep flow is the geodesic flow. And so in particular, if S is hyperbolic, we obtain another right flow. And 
And the last example is not really an example, so there's no red vector field to report. So one essential property of the rep flow, the rep vector field, is that its flow preserves alpha. Okay, so when I have a, a vector field, I will always denote its flow with the time uh, here and the vector field there. So an immediate cor corollary of this is that it preserves the contact structure. So preserving the contact structure can be translated in the fact that uh, this is what is called a contactomorphism. But maybe more important here, it also preserves the alpha, and so alpha wedge the alpha, so this is volume preserving. The proof of the fact that uh, the rep flow preserve alpha is one line computation, so I would just, just uh, do it. So I'm going to differentiate this and hopefully obtain zero. So by Lee Carton formula, I'll op I obtain that this is the pullback of the inner product of R alpha with D alpha plus the external derivative of the inner product of uh, alpha with R alpha. And the first one is zero because it's my definition of rep vector field. And this here is one, still the definition of rep vector field, so when I differentiate, I get zero. So this is zero. So rep flows are very special flows. I will just give one theorem, which say that every rep flows on a compact uh, three manifold without boundary as a periodic orbit. So this is a proof by Tobes of this, and before it was called the Weinstein conjecture.
and it's still, still called the Wanshin conjecture. So there's higher dimensional version of uh, contact structures and red flows, and this is still open in higher dimension. If I have my usual hypothesis, then any red vector field for any contact structure I may have on my manifold as a periodic arc. Any questions so far? So let's consider for a few moments a more general class of uh, flows adapted to a contact structure, which are called in the contact world contact flows. So a vector field X on M with contact structure Xi is contact if its flow preserves Xi. So examples of uh, contact vector fields are obviously red vector fields. But it's not the only vector field. So the one transverse to the contact structure are not the only, only one that can preserve psi. So I will give you another example in R3. So with the standard contact structure, d over dx, its flow clearly preserves alpha, but when y equals to zero, this is tangent to the contact plane. And so in um, <clears throat> the so there's contact geometry in uh, odd dimension and symplectic geometry in even uh, dimension. And so there's a, a Hamiltonian and Hamiltonian vector fields in the symplectic world, which helps you to describe vector fields with functions. And so uh, contact uh, vector fields can be described with functions, and that's the theorem I'm going to state now, which is Lieberman theorem. So, 
So. Yes. Are there any in oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I will study this theorem, and <laughs> you will see that there are plenty of them. In fact, with, okay, it's a bit cheating, but you could put zero, so you, you could have it locally and extend it to zero, and again. Okay. Oh, and you can just exclude the P3 again. Yes, yes. Thanks. <laughs> So, and I, I pick a one form alpha. Um, so I have the, the set of uh, contacts of vector fields. And uh, through a contact vector field, X, I can uh, construct a smooth map out of it by evaluating alpha, my contact form on X. And this is a bijection. So the rep vector field is the one that, that gives me one here. Uh, the rep vector field for Alpha is the one that gives me one here. But there's a lot of other vector fields, and you can detect if your vector field is transverse or not to the contact structure, but saying if you get zero at some point here. So, red vector fields are the vector fields that have a non zero function here. So, this is called the contact Hamiltonian. So in this larger class of contact vector field, the rep vector field are the ones that are always transversal to the contact structure. It's not hard, actually. So this condition of the preservation of the flow, if you differentiate it, you get some local condition on the flow, and then uh, you prove that uh, if you give a function, you have only one way to satisfy this condition to obtain uh, some contact flow. So be careful, there's some sort of naming issue between the contact world and the Anosov world. Uh, but everything is fine because uh, if you look at the contact vector field transversal to the contact structure, uh, it's a red flow. So everything's fine, but could be disturbing. Sorry, I'm not sure. Maybe you already answered, but how can we think of the red flow if the contact world is red? If uh, your contact Hamiltonian uh, never vanishes. It's not obvious. Okay, so this was uh, basic definitions from uh, contact uh, geometry. Now I will turn to something that at first sight might look completely different, but hopefully at the end of the talk I will convince you that the two things are very related. So I will turn to topology and talk about open books. So I will start with a definition. <clears throat> so Still the same setting. So an open book decomposition 
of my favorite manifold M. So is a pair, so I will have two objects, K and Pi. Where, so the first one, K, so K uh, is a link in M. So a link, it's a smooth, one dimensional, compact submanifold in M. And so pi, it's, uh, it's a map from M uh, without K to S1. And this is a vibration. So you locally have a product structure. And I'm asking for a specific behavior near K. So I pick a neighborhood of K, so which is a disk neighborhood of K. I will consider coordinate Z and cylindrical coordinate R theta in my disk. Um, so I want pi of Z R theta to be equal to theta. Okay, so let's draw some picture. So near K, so here uh, is a piece of K, and then the fiber of my vibration um, arrive Like that, so each one uh, arrived from the study at constant angle uh, to k. So this is an, an open book uh, in uh, that sense. Pi is smooth. Uh, uh, yeah, here everything is smooth. And uh, maybe you can do non-smooth ones, uh, but I'm only considering smooth one here. Um, okay, and so in analogy with the open book, um, K is called the binding. And the fibers are called the pages. So a page can be either the abstract fiber of my fibra vibration or a concrete level set for pi, depending on the context. And also, if I glue K on a page, I obtain a surface with boundary, and so I can also consider my page to be compact, and I will still call it a page. Yes. No, the, the, the fiber the fibers are all the same. Yes. Just that it's not uh, locally it's not. Uh, it's locally trivial. Okay. Locally trivial fibration. Other questions? Why is it called a decomposition? Sorry. Why is it called a decomposition? Oh, 
It's a way to describe your manifold. Maybe what I will say with abstract open book. Yeah. And yeah, if you you can describe it, yes, with the pages and the written map. Sorry. Yes, this is a manifold because uh, your manifold is the binding plus the vibration. Yes. Yeah, your K is the one. Uh, the, the K is always the same one, so it's the link. When I remove it from the manifold, I have a vibration. And so my vibration is not defined along in the middle here. So here my vibration is un undefined and it's given by the angle otherwise. So it's time for examples. And we look at examples on S3. Still the unit sphere of C2. So, my first example. So, I have to describe K1 and Pi1. So, K1 will be 0 times S1. So, this is indeed inside S3. And by one, so this is defined on S3 uh, outside of K1. So I, I pick the first coordinate, Z1, so this is in uh, C, and it cannot be zero. So I can renormalize to obtain someone in something in S1. Which is if you pick uh, coordinates R1, theta 1, which is given by theta 1. So uh, let's uh, do some picture. So my, the binding is obviously a circle. So I'm doing picture in R3. And uh, the page, it's a disk because the D2 parameter is free here. So I have a vibration by disk, which means that I will have a S1 family of disk in uh, R3. Uh, minus uh, my uh, circle here. So here I have the flat one and then it will inflate. So here here is a second disk for instance with boundary on the same 
uh, many for the same knot K1. And then as we are in S3 and not in R3 at some point, my page will go through uh, the point at infinity. So the bubble will explode. And I will get the horizontal plane here. And then it will go back from below. So I have my S1 and then disk time S1, which uh, fills the uh, remaining part of S3. So let's do a second example, and it will be time to stop. So K2, K2 uh, for the binding and Pi2 uh, for the vibration. So this one will be a link, the union of two nodes. So I'm still in S3. So I fix one of the coordinates to be zero. And the other one goes around the, the cycle. And then pi two So the product Z1, Z2 is a complex number which is never zero. I renormalize. to get my vibration. So, here, so the binding is two, Sarker, if I use the serographic projection, one goes through the point at infinity and the other one is here in the middle. And the page is an analysis because one hunger is, is three and one radius is three, but between zero and one, zero and one not included. So I will obtain something like that. So this is one page, and the foliation is obtained by rotating this picture. So this may not be a super clear picture, so I will draw a, a less symmetric, but I think more uh, compressible one. So, so my two uh, circles are linked, and my analysis is here. In my picture, yes, but it's an analysis, so it's. <laughs> yeah, and so this picture uh, is this one with uh, this point uh, going at infinity. Yeah. And when you have this, you can rotate it and you get uh, the, the vibration by uh, analysis uh, on S3. So my time is over, so I have been 
bit slow. So we'll do, I think there won't be surgery uh, on the last day. <laughs> <laughs>